This is the fourth video in the Edexcel B3 revision tutorial series. Today we will be looking at the growth of bacteria. In this tutorial we will look at how bacteria grow, we will look at Louis Pasteur's contribution to the development of aseptic techniques, and finally we will look at how resazurin dye can be used to monitor bacterial growth. So how do bacteria replicate? Well in order to multiply, bacteria will split themselves into two. And this is known as binary fission. This means that when bacteria replicate, they double their population. So to start with, you'll have one bacteria, then two, then four, then eight, then 16, and so on. This means that they replicate exponentially. So they show exponential growth and the population doubles at regular intervals. So we can see that the population is increasing, albeit at a very slow rate, and then all of a sudden it will explode into a much, much larger population. This is why you can go from feeling perfectly fine to feeling incredibly ill with a bacterial infection over a short period of time. Bacteria will replicate like this when conditions are right. The conditions that bacteria like are not too hot or too cold, so they're warm, about 37 degrees. Our internal body temperature is a perfect breeding ground for bacteria, as well as ensuring that there is plenty of nutrients in order for them to carry out respiration. So where does disease come from? How does disease appear? Well, until the 19th century, people used to think that diseases spontaneously appeared from nowhere. This was due to the theory of spontaneous generation, which was originally coined by Aristotle around 350 BC. He said that it was readily observable that aphids arose from the dew which falls on plants, fleas from putrid matter and mice from dirty hay. So the disease spontaneously appeared from the decaying matter. Quite unbelievably, as I've mentioned, this belief remained unchallenged for more than 2,000 years. This changed with the work of Louis Pasteur in the 19th century. Pasteur was able to demonstrate that organisms such as bacteria were responsible for making milk, beer and wine go off. So what did Pasteur do? Well, Pasteur set up a series of experiments that enabled him to look at when the decay was occurring. So he proved that bacteria could be removed by boiling and then cooling the liquid. This is what we now know as pasteurisation, which is used in the treatment of milk. Pasteur then undertook some experiments to prove that the bacteria came from the environment and did not spontaneously generate. So how did he do this? In order to test spontaneous generation, Pasteur set up an experiment to test if microbes and germs in the air which caused disease and decomposition were there. He carried out the following experiment. So he set up two flasks of this broth. One he left open and the other one he had a curved neck on. And he found out that the flask that had the curved neck on did not have any bacteria or microbes growing in the broth. He then decided to boil the broth. And again, he left this to rest. He then found out that when the curved neck was in place, again, there were no microorganisms growing in his broth. He then took the curved neck off the broth, left it again for a short while, and then found that there were now microorganisms growing in the broth. This showed that there must be microbes in the air that get into the broth, causing it to go off. Pasteur also went on to introduce the idea of pasteurisation. Pasteurisation is an aseptic technique. An aseptic technique is a process that you do to reduce contamination by germs. In order to carry out pasteurisation, you heat a liquid, usually milk, to 70 degrees C for 20 seconds. You then cool it back down and this process will kill off most of the bacteria and therefore increases the time before the milk goes off, allowing the milk to remain fresher for longer. 
An alternative to this is ultra heat treatment. In ultra heat treatment, milk is heated to 135 degrees C for one second. This is known as UHT milk. Pasteurization is still the preferred method for heat treatment of milk because even though it doesn't kill off all of the bacteria, it isn't as severe and it doesn't make the milk taste funny or destroy some of the vitamins found in the milk. However, milk will still go off eventually, regardless if it's been treated by pasteurisation or via UHT. This is because once the milk is opened, you are introducing more bacteria into it, as well as the fact that with pasteurisation, it does not kill off all of the bacteria found in the milk. We can test the amount of microorganism growth in milk via using a chemical known as resazurin. The resazurin practical is one that you can be asked about in the exam. Resazurin is a dye that's sensitive to oxygen. When there's lots of oxygen around, it is a nice blue colour. However, as oxygen levels decrease, it goes through lilac, through to mauve, then pink, and then finally it goes colourless or white. We can use this colour change in order to examine the quality of the milk and therefore the number of microorganisms growing within it. This is because as the bacterial population grows, it will be using up more and more oxygen as they carry out respiration. So the more bacteria, the more oxygen is being used up. The more oxygen that's being used up, the more colour change in the resazurin we will see. So if there is very little bacteria in the milk or very little respiration having taken place, the resazurin will stay blue. If, however, there are lots of bacteria present, then we will get a more striking colour change. We can use this test in order to examine how different conditions, for example temperature or pH, affect the growth of bacteria. We can heat milk to different temperatures, leave it for the bacteria to respire, and then add in our resazurin and examine the colour change. This would allow us to examine a colour change over different periods of time. The sample which has had the smallest colour change would show that that is where the growth of bacteria is slowest and the sample which has had the most drastic colour change will show us that that is the sample where the bacteria has grown the fastest. In this video we have looked at the exponential growth of bacteria. So what's the danger for humans? Well as I alluded to earlier, when we get infected by one bacteria it has the ability to split into two. Due to the exponential growth we will then go from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32. All of these numbers are still relatively low numbers of bacteria. However, once we start getting into the thousands and then the ten thousands and then even into the hundred thousands or millions of bacteria, we are still doubling that population of bacteria each time. So we end up having a sole bacteria like this before very quickly feeling very, very under the weather. This concludes this tutorial video in the Edexcel B3 series. In the next video, B3.5, we will be looking at the immune system, immunization, vaccination and monoclonal antibodies.